Hi again, Mark here from TalkingBass.net. This week I'm going to continue the Walking Bassline series by expanding on all the previous uh, chord tone lessons and applying all of that stuff to the uh, classic song Fly Me To The Moon. As always, visit TalkingBass.net for loads more lessons and articles and you'll find all the lesson material ready to download at the click of a button. Also, subscribe to receive the free scale reference guide and you'll get regular updates direct to your inbox. So let's have a look at the chord progression of Fly Me To The Moon. If you've never heard the tune, then just have a look on YouTube, uh, there's plenty of versions on there. The most famous version is probably uh, that recorded by Frank Sinatra, uh, but there's loads of other versions. And um, also remember to listen out for the uh, time signature. Uh, we'll be covering it in 4-4, obviously, uh, as a beginner walking bass line uh, track, but there are some 3-4 versions uh, kicking about, so just uh, be aware of that. Um, the reason that I'm going to use this tune is because it's very diatonic in its chord sequence. It stays roughly in the same key, uh, same, uh, key and uh, there's just a few secondary dominants here and there to give a kind of minorization kind of uh, vibe. Uh, we've also got one chord per bar, usually. There are a couple of uh, two chord per bars uh, in there. But uh, by and large, it's uh, a pretty easy chord sequence and there's a lot of movement by uh, perfect fourth, so which is really nice for getting uh, some of these patterns down, okay? So we've already covered arpeggios or chord tones in the previous lesson, so make sure to check that out if you have any problems with any of the lingo that I'm using. Uh, you should have a good knowledge of the major 7, minor 7, dominant 7 and minor 7 flat 5 chords, uh, both up and down in this first position before you try going through this, uh, through this chart. I'll be doing a much more detailed analysis of the actual chord progression itself in an upcoming lesson. So for now, let's just run through the chord tones, uh, well, the chord arpeggios. Uh, I want you to stick to root notes on the E and the A string, so we're not going to be venturing up onto the D and G. Um, and because we've got four beats in a bar, the arpeggios work out great through there. So root, third, fifth, seventh, they're all four note chords, and uh, we can just play them in that order. So root, third, fifth, seventh. So we'll just work through every chord like that. Uh, when we reach any of the two chord per bar sections, like E minor seven to A seven, within one bar, we've got two beats on each, uh, just play the root note twice. So E, E, and then A. A for E minor 7, A7. Uh, and then if there's uh, any chords that stay on the same chord, so we do have an A minor 7, A7, uh, we're just going to play root 5th. So root, root, 5th, 5th. But that'll all make more sense as we reach them. So just one last thing before we play through the chords. Uh, as I say, I want you to stay down in this lower position. So uh, I've been through all these fingerings in the uh, previous lesson, but um, just as a quick recap, um, when you play something like an A minor 7, instead of moving up to the second finger or first finger uh, pattern, we'll be using the fourth finger. So there's an A minor 7. For a G, that would be on the second finger. So that's a G dominant 7. Something like an F major 7 would use the first finger. So you can see that I'm not moving out of this position. I keep the hand in this position, so I've got the first finger roughly over that second fret there, fourth finger over this fifth fret, and then just pick the nearest finger for the arpeggio. And so we look for the root note, there's an A, it's under the fourth finger. There's a G, it's under the second finger, there's an F, it's under the first finger. Keeps it nice and neat there. Also, when we get to the E uh, root bass chords, we'll use the open string there. I'm going to use a, a, an arpeggio over two strings so that we can avoid using so many uh, open strings. Um, so the E is going to be, uh, so let's say it was an E minor 7, uh, a quick uh, way of, um, of doing this is to play the root and the third on the E string and then the fifth and the seventh on the next string up. So E, G, then B, D. If you need any help with any uh, two-string arpeggios, then just uh, go go to the lesson that's on uh, YouTube or Talking Bass. There's one specifically uh, dedicated to uh, scales and arpeggios over two strings, so uh, just go check that out. So, after all that, <laughs> let's try working through the chord progression. So, we start on the A minor 7. So, as I mentioned before, we'll be using the fourth finger there, so we've got the A there. Not using open strings for the A, the D or the G, I'm going to try and stick with fretted notes. So, A there, so we work across, root, third, fifth, seventh. So we're just working across the arpeggio. So, A minor 7 again, D minor 7, G7, C major 7, F major 7, B minor 7, uh, flat 5, sorry, and E7, 
finally A minor 7 to A7, two beats on each. Okay, so the, in that eight bars, everything was pretty straightforward apart from the A minor seven to A seven, like I said, root, root, fifth, fifth. We're avoiding using the third, uh, trying to keep it real simple now. And uh, for the uh, E seven, E, G sharp on the E string, B and D on the A string. So that's a uh, that's a, a two string pattern for that. And those patterns are really, really, really useful. Uh, if I was to play one up here, you can see that they're really helpful in uh, moving up the neck as opposed to across the neck. So for that open E string, because I wanted to move up into this position, really good for that. Uh, and like I say, I'm trying to avoid using the open strings on the A, the D and the G. So let's try through those eight bars again, but this time in time. So I'll start quite slowly. So we've got one, two, three, four. Okay, so that's the first four, uh, first eight bars. Now let's quickly uh, run through the second eight bars. So uh, very, very similar. So we've got starting on the uh, D minor seven. So G seven, C major seven, then E minor seven to A seven, two beats each. So we've got E, E, A, A. So just the root notes. Then D minor seven. G7, C major 7, then B minor 7 flat 5 to E7, two beats each. So again, just root notes. So with those two, uh, two chords uh, per bar, we don't even have to think about the chord qualities uh, as it stands. Uh, when we're just playing them like this, just the root notes. So you just have to think B, B, E, E, okay? So uh, again, in time, so we have D minor 7, So that's the first 16 bars. So now to save time, I'm just gonna move straight to the backing track and we'll just go through the whole tune because the second 16 bars is very similar to the first. Um, so I'll just work through those and we'll go through at a slowest tempo. Uh, in the download, you'll be able to download uh, several different tempos, starting at this, 80 beats per minute, then you've got 120, you know, and just be able to work through like that. So with the backing track and through the whole thing. Once you've mastered playing those uh, arpeggios through that chord progression, just uh, speed up the tempo. So we'll go for the uh, second backing track. I'll just play through that first 16 bars and you get to hear how that sounds, okay? So uh, at 120 beats per minute.
So as I mentioned in the last lesson, that almost qualifies as a walking line. The notes are all fine, it's just the targeting and the weaving through the chords in a, in a kind of intentional direction that we need to work on. So we just need to use those notes that we've just uh, used uh, and played as a palette and home in on each chord. And as I showed you in the last lesson, we can use enclosures and different orderings of the chord tones to uh, achieve that. So now I want you to try something a little different, and this is a bit tougher. This time I want you to play descending arpeggios through the progression instead of ascending, like we've just done. And uh, this time I want you to use root notes starting on the D and the G strings instead of the E and the A strings. Uh, the other notes of the arpeggio are obviously going to fall on the E and the A strings, but the root notes are going to be up here, you know, D and G string. So I also want you to stay in this low position between frets 1 and 5 as much as possible. The only exception is going to be D, okay, which we can take on this 7th uh, fret up here on the G string. Um, so any root note can be taken on these two strings uh, because of that, so E, F, G, A, B, C, D, okay. Uh, and I recently released another lesson dealing with the problems that you face with these descending arpeggios and scales. So if you have any problems uh, trying this out, then just check out that lesson uh, because it's a much harder thing to do than you might realise. So first, let's just work through them without the uh, track. So um, we'll just go through those first 16 bars again. So first of all, A minor seven. So we're in this position. So we're looking for an A in, uh, in, in that area on the D and the G string. So we have A there, okay? So we're gonna come down through the arpeggio. So we have the A there, the G, E, C. Okay, and if you've seen that lesson on the descending arpeggios, you'll know that that was the fourth finger arpeggio if we'd have started down here on the E string, okay? Okay, so it's just that we're starting up here. Um, but you will get to learn how to play down through these in this kind of linear way as opposed to just seeing the whole, uh, the whole of the chord tones. You do need to see them like that, but uh, when, you, when the pressure's on and you're just working through a line like this, it does help to be able to just think, ah, I'm coming down this minor seven, come down through that pattern, okay? So uh, A minor seven. Now we go for D minor seven. So as I said, there's a D up here. So we come down, fourth finger there, starting on the D. Okay, next up we've got the G7. So again, we've got the fourth finger there. C major seven, so we've got the C there on the G string. Then we've got the F major seven, so F here on the D string, come down. B minor seven flat five, so we've got the B there on the G string. Then E7, we've got the E there, so we come down. And then we've got uh, A minor seven to A7, so again we'll use root note, root note, fifth, fifth. So the fifth was below this time. Uh, then we go to D minor seven again, so we shoot up to the D. Then G7. C major seven. E minor seven to A7, so we've got the E there on the D string, A there on the G string, so. D minor seven again, then G seven, C major seven, and B minor seven flat five to E seven, just root notes, okay? So as I said, that's a really deceiving exercise and uh, a lot of you have probably just found that really difficult to do. Um, it's, um, it's pretty easy running up through the arpeggios because you get so used to seeing arpeggios in that way. But the minute that you have to come down, you have two problems. The first one is obviously knowing the notes up there because everybody's better at knowing the notes. Well, not everybody, but a lot of people are better at learning the notes low down because we just use them so much because bass is such a deep instrument. Uh, but we don't get as used to playing the higher notes, especially when we get up into this kind of twilight zone area. So um, that's the first problem. And then the second problem is obviously coming down through the arpeggios. We just don't do it as much. So you just have to practice. So as I said, I do have a video absolutely dedicated to that. So check that out and, uh, and then just keep working through this chord progression. Eventually you'll start to just see the patterns. You know, you'll just know. So when you uh, think of A minor seven, you will know it. And as I've said before, this is where knowing the, um, knowing the notes of the chords is you know, just saves a lot of time because if you're just uh, relying on knowing a fingerboard pattern, then um, you know it's it's 
sometimes there aren't thing, there aren't as easy fingerboard patterns for certain things and just knowing the notes of the chord if you know a minor 7 a g e c it's easy you can just see the a you can see the g you can see the e and you can see the c okay so it makes things a lot easier so i would advise to learn the notes of the chords as well and then you can just pick them out wherever you want so again, let's up the pressure a little by uh, playing with the backing track. So um, um, we'll use the 80 beats per minute one again. So we're going to play it nice and slow uh, because this is a much trickier exercise, okay? So you might be thinking to yourself, what use is that exercise apart from to just mess with your mind? Well, um, obviously when you play a walking line, you can't just be playing ascending all the time, otherwise you just come straight clean off the end of the neck. Or you'll use ascending arpeggio patterns or whatever scalar uh, patterns, um, etc. And, and just have these ascending lines just moving around the neck all the time so we do need descending lines um, and playing them in isolation like this so just forcing ourselves to, to think of descending lines um, really helps with that and obviously like I said you'll have problems with certain notes um, and it also helps with the note uh, recognition on the neck okay so that's uh, that's where that exercise comes into its own so far the lines that we've used have been uh, standard arpeggios from a root through the chord tones, okay, in either up or down, just using consecutive chord tones. So it's uh, a matter of root, third, fifth, seventh, root, third, fifth, seventh all the time. So uh, we'll, we'll mix it up a little and we'll come up with a few more chord tone uh, patterns that have been used in the previous lessons, uh, but this time we'll be applying them to Fly Me to the Moon. So the first uh, chord tone combination we'll use is a really useful one, uh, one, three, five, three. Okay, so we work up, root so on an A minor 7, um, root, third, fifth, third. So we're only using the chord triad there, we're not even using the seventh. So um, A, C, E, C, one, three, five, three. And then when applied to the D minor 7, D, F, A, F, one, three, five, three. Okay, so we'll just work through the chord progression. Um, so. We'll go straight in with the uh, with the uh, backing track, and I'll go straight in at 120 beats per minute because uh, by now you're probably uh, getting a lot more used to the uh, chord tones. If you find it too fast, just use the 80 beats per minute, or, and if that's even too much uh, for you, just work through them slowly in your own time. Don't worry about being in time; just get the uh, notes under your fingers. Okay, so straight in at 120. One, three, five, three.
okay? And when I got to the two uh, chords per bar, again, I just either used the root notes uh, for ones with different root notes, as in B minor 7 flat 5, E7, and then uh, for the A minor 7, A7, root, root, fifth, fifth, just as we did before. So when you're looking at these chord tone combinations, you have to think about where that line is leading you. So uh, if we have a look at the A minor 7 there, we have A, C, E, C. It works perfectly in moving up uh, the root movement uh, of a fourth. So if we've got A minor 7 to D7, as we have here, A, C, E, C, the C leads in lovely into the, into the D. Okay, so that pattern that we've just used, that formula, one, three, five, three, just the, uh, the triad arpeggio uh, up and back is, is great for moving up um, a, a fourth, you know, with the root movement. And as I've said before in the previous lessons, that's what you should be looking out for, the root movement. So we've got A minor seven to D minor seven. Forget about, for now, forget about the uh, chord quality, it's A to D, okay? The chord quality is what we're gonna use for getting there, but the actual journey we're gonna be making is from the root, is from A to D, okay? And then from D, we'll be moving to G, okay? So that's, that's the distance we're gonna be moving. A to D is a fourth, D to G is a fourth, G to C, either up or down, that's a fourth as well. It's fifth if you come down, but it's uh, um, in terms of, root movement, we do think of that as a fourth. So now let's try another chord tone combination, uh, and this one again is gonna be perfect for moving up a perfect fourth, uh, and that's gonna be root note, so again with A minor seven, root note, seventh, root note, third. Okay, one, seven, one, three. And we'll just apply that to every chord tone, uh, sorry, every root note as we work through the uh, through the chord progression. And uh, I forgot to mention just before, um, yes, it's a, a perfect uh, line for moving up a fourth, just like the last one, but we can also move up a second with that. So if the root note was moving from A to B, again, it's perfect for moving there because either side of the C there when we've come back, or, Either way, we're moving smoothly. Same with this. Okay, so it, that's what it's all about, moving smoothly from one chord to another, okay? So let's apply that formula to the uh, chord progression, one, seven, one, three, and uh, the only chord that will not play starting on the, uh, on the E or the A string is gonna be the E, because obviously we can't move down below the E. If you've got a five string, it's different, uh, so you, then you can move down. But uh, any four stringers out there, take the E up here, and then we can come down to the seventh, okay? So as I said before, one, seven, one, three. And I'll just work through the first 16 bars. You can then work through the whole thing uh, yourself. And uh, like I say, if you have any problems, just play uh, at the slower tempo. I'll be taking it at 120, okay? So let's try uh, another chord tone combination in one, five, three, one. And as you can see with this, I'm just applying different formulas of the, uh, or formulae of the, uh, of the chord tones to the chord progression. So you get used to uh, varying up how you approach each chord and see those chord tones laid out in front of you. So you're not limited by just playing up through the arpeggio. So um, we have one, five, three, one. So again, this is just using the notes of the core triad. So on an A minor seven, we'd put out one, A, five, E, three, C, and back to the uh, root note A. So one, five, three, one, A, E, C, A. And this pattern's useful for coming down to a seventh or a second, because whatever the final note is on, that, uh, on the pattern, look for the uh, notes that are either side of it and that's where you're able to get to smoothly. So A, E, C, A, so we could move to the B or B flat uh, or down to the G or you know A flat. So um, 
let's try with the uh, with the uh, backing track and uh, I'll just go straight in at 120 beats per minute and I'll just play the first 16 bars again. You can work through in your own time, just work through the whole thing, okay? Now let's try a little trickier one. We'll try one, seven, five, three. So applied to an A minor seven there, we've got A up to the G, the seventh, down to the fifth, the E, down to the third, the C, down to the root. One, seven, five, three. Okay, so when applied to the chord progression with the backing track, so on. So let's try one last uh, little chord tone permutation that's uh, useful for moving down a minor third. Uh, now that might not seem like a very common uh, chord progression but it actually is because if we're in C major and we want to move to A minor 7, okay we've got the A minor 7 just down there so it's it's uh, like moving from chord 1 to chord 6. So this, uh, this permutation can be handy for that. So we have uh, 1, 3, 1, 7. Okay, so it's a very uh, 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 small movement there. So we've got over an A minus seven, we've got A, C, A, G. One, three, one, seven. And from the A, we could be moving down to an F sharp or down to an F, or even coming back to the root note. Okay, so um, we'll apply it to the uh, backing track, to the chord progression and uh, see how we do. And when we get to the E, Again, because we're using the uh, the seventh in there, we'll use the uh, E up here, okay? So with the backing track. These chord tone permutations are great for developing your ability to move around over a chord and give you a few patterns for creating walking lines. Each pattern is going to help you with that journey from one root note to another in a different way and each one can be uh, put into a kind of mental musical toolbox and uh, gradually assimilated into your playing over a, a longer period of time. So now let's try creating a line through those chords just using a variety of these different lines. Don't worry about being able to play fluently through them at the moment, you know, on the fly. As I've mentioned in the previous lesson, just look at the root note, identify the interval distance that you've got to move, and then pick an appropriate line, okay? So um, let's work through them slowly, and we'll just stick to a couple of lines to begin with. So um, we'll take that A minor 7, so we want to, we've got to move from A to D, so there we have a perfect fourth. So we can use one of several lines, we could either use so that was the first one we played, or we could try, so that was the 1, 7, 1, 3, the second line that we played. So uh, let's just take the, uh, the second one there, A, G, A, C, and then we're up to the D, okay? So then for the D to the G, we've got a perfect fourth again. So 
let's use the uh, let's use the first one that we played. So we'll try a different one. So we've got D. So just up, root, third, fifth, uh, third, and then back. So so far we have. to the G okay so already we've just used two different lines and it doesn't sound as samey as it did before when you just work through it can start to sound a little bit monotonous so by mixing them up a little you get a little bit more uh, diversity in the line and it doesn't sound like you're just playing by numbers you know so um, let's start again so and we're at the G now we have a choice, we've got the G and we're moving to a C. So again, we can either move up uh, by a perfect fourth or we can move down uh, to the C there, which is down by a perf uh, perfect fifth. So uh, we'll move up for now so that we can get, uh, you know, to move up into uh, this kind of stratosphere up here. So um, let's use the same uh, chord uh, movement that we used originally at the start. So uh, we'll use the one, seven, one, three. Okay, so, so far. Okay, so that's a line moving from the A to the D to the G to the C. And we've only used two different lines, two different chord tone permutations that we've already played through. One, seven, one, three. One, three, five, three, and then that same one, one, seven, one, three, that we use down here. But of course, when you use these chord term permutations, they're, they are likely to sound different when you use them over different chord qualities, because one, seven, one, three, over a major seven, is using a major seventh and a major third. Using it over a minor seventh is gonna use a minor seventh and a minor third. So they do appear to be different uh, uh, lines. They do sound a little different. Okay, so now we're up at the uh, in the stratosphere up here at the C. So uh, we want to come down because I'm guessing that you'd probably be thinking, "Oh, I don't really want to carry on going up here," you know, because we're just beginning with this, so we don't want to get too complicated. So we'll move down from the C. So the next chord is F. Now that's down a perfect fifth. It would be up a perfect fourth. But we're, uh, but we're moving down. So when you invert an interval like that, it, it changes. So a perfect fourth becomes a perfect fifth. So we're moving down. So the perfect way to come down here is just to play down through the arpeggio, down through the chord tones. Uh, and uh, that would give us this. C, B, G, E. And then we're there. And you'll know how to do that because the tough exercise that we used earlier on, where we were just using... You know, just using the descending chord tones, that's where they come in handy. So, we've come down through the C major. Uh, so, I'll start from the beginning, uh, beginning again. So, we've got A minor 7. And we're to the F, okay? So, we're actually creating a weaving line now. Very limited in, in um, range, but we're... Uh, but it's a it's a line nonetheless. So now let's move from that uh, from the F down to the B. Now, so this is a little bit of a different uh, different interval. So we've got this tritone here, which is a uh, augmented fourth, diminished fifth, however you want to see it. So um, we can still use the uh, the arpeggio to come down. So if we're going to come down through that F major seven, okay. To use the open string, you can see it a little bit easier, but I'm just using the A there with the fourth finger. Okay, so even though it wasn't a perfect fourth, it still worked because we're still in that um, that uh, that uh, area, let's say. So we've come down. So all together again. So the lines are going well there. So now we've got to go from the B to the E. So again, we've got a perfect fourth movement, B to E. This time we'll move up, so we can go up through the uh, through the chord tones. You could go down if you wanted, but we'll we'll move up. So um, up through the chord tones. So which one shall we use? Well, let's try that uh, the the regular one of one three five three. Okay, so. 
with there because we'd use the other one twice so we'll mix it up a little bit okay so from the start again So now we're at the E, we've got another decision to make. Do we move up or do we move down? As I've mentioned before in these, uh, in these lessons, that's the kind of decision making we're using. We're thinking, do we go up? Do we go down? Do we go up, 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 down, down? You know, that's how the, the arc of these lines is created. So um, we'll go down for now. So we've got the E, we're gonna come down the E7. So to the A. I've got to mention, yes, we're gonna be moving up a perfect fourth or we can move down a perfect fifth so uh, again we can just come down through the arpeggio and that'll just get us there in time so so we have e d b g sharp a okay so once we get to the a uh, we've then got to get to the d again upper uh, upper perfect fourth but we're uh, we've got two different chords in there a minor seven and a seven now before we've just been using the root note and the fifth but we could use the root note and the third but of course on if we if we're playing the third on the uh, on the third beat let's say we have to remember what chord we're on so it just so happens that's an a7 okay so we'd have a minor seven we're playing two notes on there just on the root note and then we'll play the third of a7 Okay, so it's a little bit different from just playing the fifth, okay? And it just so happens that leads us into the D, okay? So we've got A, A, C sharp, C sharp, okay? So I'll start from the beginning again. So we've got A. And we're to the D. So now we're up at that D, we can uh, we can just work through very quickly through those last eight bars. I don't really want to give you uh, the whole song. I'm not going to work through the whole thing because I, I'm not giving you a pre-rehearsed, pre-composed line. Uh, really, the idea here is to just give you these principles and concepts that you can work with uh, on your own and then create your own line. So you can either write your own line or just play it on the fly, as uh, you know, as most people do when you play walking bass lines. Walking bass lines are generally improvised. So um, so yeah, so let's uh, carry on with this. So we've got the D. So now we'll just, uh, we need to get up to the G. So again, movement by fourth or down to a fifth. So we'll work up. So once again, we'll just use the one, three, five, three to get there. So and then we're at the G. Uh, this time let's come down from the G. So we'll come down to the C. So again, down a fifth or up a fourth. So we can come down the arpeggio. So. Then we're at the C, so we've got. Now the next uh, the next bar has got E minor seven and A seven, so two beats each. So um, to get to that E, it's a little bit tricky from the C because it's actually one of the chord tones. It's it's, it's E there. So so uh, what we can do is repeat the uh, the root note twice, so and then just come down the tones, and that leads us straight into it. So that's a new little pattern there, just for uh, that, so that for that movement. Okay, so from uh, from the uh, the beginning of D minor seven, okay. So now we've got uh, two bars, uh, sorry, two chords in this bar, E minor seven and A seven. Now before, what we did was played the root note twice, E, E, A, A. But there's another uh, few, there's quite a few things that we can do and I will be devoting a lesson to two chords per bar uh, later on. But for now, I'll just give you a quick taster. So again, we need to look at the root movement. So we've got E to A. So that's up a fourth again. <laughs> so we've got the uh, perfect note in between there, the G, the third of E, okay? So E, G, A. If you think about it, root, third, fourth. The th third moves into the fourth really well. So we've got E, G, so that's the third of uh, E minor. Then A, again, we're moving up to the D. Fourth again, so we'll use the third again. So root, third, and then we're at the D. So we've got E, G, root and third, then A, C sharp, root and third. E minor seven, A seven, okay? So 
E, G, A, C sharp, D. So uh, from the D minor seven, we've got. And we're back at the D. Now I'll very quickly run through these last, uh, these last bars. So then let's come down from the D down to the G. Then up uh, from the G to the C, so. Then we're at the C, and then we've got to get to the B minor seven flat five. So we've got the B there. It's only a semitone below or a half step below. So um, one good way of getting down that half step is to just play the one that's uh, one, five, three, one. And that brings us to the B, okay, smoothly. So C, G, E, C, B, okay. And then we can use the same principle as we did before, use the, uh, use the thirds. So B, D, E, G sharp, and then we're at the A. Okay, we can back around. So uh, from the D again. Okay. So here I'll just work through that line with the backing track and you can hear all the uh, finished product sounds. Now, obviously, we're only really limiting ourselves to chord tones, which is quite tough to do when you really want to add some scale notes or chromatics into the mix just to make these jumps a little smoother. But if you can play using only chord tones, then that's a really good foundation for everything that comes later. Because at the end of the day, a chord progression is made up of chords. Okay, that's the information that you've been provided. Uh, so if all else fails, you can you know always rely on that solid foundation. So. When you listen through that, that uh, bass line that we've just uh, been through and written there for that uh, chart, it's, um, it's gone from being just a case of running through various combinations of chord tones like one, three, five, seven, one, three, five, seven, to having a few different combinations that we can just use to create a line and just weave it. And like I said, um, you really want to be making smooth transitions. You don't just want the notes to be flying up in the air and then just you know coming back down with these huge leaps. We're just trying to you know get from one place to another smoothly. So next lesson, we'll start looking at how we can add some scale tones into the mix, okay? So if you haven't been to TalkingBass.net, then check it out. There's uh, loads of HD video bass lessons on there and loads of articles on all aspects of bass playing. And if you subscribe, you'll receive the free scale reference guide, which contains every scale that you're ever gonna need in general everyday bass playing. So uh, I also give Skype lessons, so just email me if you're interested and uh, you know, you want a bit more of a personalized experience. And lastly, like this video and subscribe to the YouTube channel if it's been helpful. Okay, see you later.